This is how I transitioned from being a software engineer to a cybersecurity analyst. So for anyone who's new to my channel, hi, my name is Sandra, and I currently work as a security analyst, and I am very much in my early career. I have about four years of experience, but cybersecurity was not always my go-to tech career. This wasn't something that I had initially planned when I went into cybersecurity. So hopefully me sharing this story with you guys can give you some insight into how I got started in cybersecurity. So starting off in college, I majored in information science and technology which was ist this is kind of like the cs dropout program that a lot of people talk about or at least that was kind of like our nickname which i honestly didn't take offense to at all because i actually was a cs major before i transitioned to ist but my first major in college was actually nursing and at the time i was graduating high school i didn't really know what i wanted to major in and and i ended up picking nursing because it seemed like a good field with you know, relative job security. The world's always going to need nurses. But after taking a look at the curriculum, I realized that it probably wasn't for me, as well as the fact that I am very queasy when it comes to seeing blood. So, so obviously that already really took nursing out of the question. And kudos to all the nurses and healthcare professionals out there. But essentially, I didn't necessarily have a, a passion to chase or a major that I really, really wanted to be in. And I initially decided to major in computer science because I knew that tech jobs made a lot of money and at the time I was going to college because I wanted a job that had a good starting salary and let's face it, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why people go to college in the first place. And after about a semester or so, maybe two semesters majoring in computer science, I switched over to information science and technology. The main reason was because I didn't want to take that many math classes. Math wasn't necessarily my best strong suit. And here's the first hint of me kind of going into that cyber security space. So I actually went to a state school at Temple University in Philadelphia, and we actually had a certification program that the school provided if you took a certain set of classes. So they had a program called the Computer Security and Digital Forensic Certification. And, and if you were a CS major, you probably didn't take the certification because, because it requires you to take, I think, three or four different classes that first IST students already had to take two of them as a requirement and CS majors did not have to take those two classes. So for a CS major, if you want that computer security digital forensic certification, you would have to take three or four extra classes to get that certification. While as a IST major, which I now was, I was already taking those two classes regardless. So, and the fact that I still had to take IST electives to graduate in my major anyway, these two last classes ended up being IST majors that you know, I probably would have chosen anyway because they seemed the most interesting. Those four classes ended up being courses that I was going to take anyway, and that is why I got my computer security and digital forensics certification. Now again, this probably would not have happened if I if I didn't switch from computer science to IST. And this is just specific for my school and, and it just occurred by happenstance and luck, I guess, that I was able to get this certification after switching because I decided to switch my major. And at the time, I wasn't necessarily interested in a cybersecurity career or a digital forensics career, but I really was just looking for something extra to boost my resume and stand out a little bit at career fairs and stuff. And and it kind of made sense to get this certification because, because I figured not everyone would have it. And on top of that, it was completely free so i just took those four classes and and i graduated with that certification so my junior year was the first year that i officially got my first official internship i was in the software engineering program at jp morgan chase and at the time that was or i'm sure still now but um at the time it was a highly coveted internship i really wanted it i'd applied to jp morgan every single year leading up to that and i was so so happy when i got that internship my junior year because if you don't know, junior year is typically the year where a lot of people are really stressing over getting internships because that typically means that you'll have a job after college because the internship that you do for your junior year is typically the offer that you'll get um, your senior year and then you'll start after you graduate. So that is typically kind of like the timeline. Of course, this will look different for schools that have who have, let's say, quarters instead of semesters. So that's definitely something to keep in mind as well. But during this internship, I was primarily coding. Um, this was a coding internship, not a cybersecurity internship. And that is something I want to note. Um, initially, when I was starting out looking for jobs and looking for internships, I was really open to anything. But but the main thing that I was interested in was software engineering. And that is why this internship was kind of like everything that I had ever wanted. So we worked in an intern team of four people and essentially we were just building out a full stack application from scratch. It was really interesting. Um, it was my first time but really building anything in a, in a company environment. So obviously very different from a school project. The second thing that was not necessarily cybersecurity related, but a little bit was the fact that I was working in the risk organization. So what I was working on, I won't go into the specifics, but essentially I was working on the 
confidentiality level of certain data in documents and that sort of tied back to identity access management in terms of who can view this data, who's managing the access to this data, and what are the controls in place to make sure that people who don't and shouldn't have access to this data don't get their hands on it. So during my internship, even though I was working on a full stack application, we we're still thinking about these things that pertain back to cybersecurity and, and access management that I never would have thought that much about if it wasn't for that internship project. And I don't want to say that everything happens for a reason and I don't want to go too woo woo on you guys, but I really do think that things happen for you and not to you. And, and the experiences that you collect along the way, no matter what they are, will eventually lead you to the place that you need to be. And at least that's, you know, my personal opinion. So after that internship, I did get a full-time offer and the next chapter of the story really goes back to one of my favorite conferences in the entire world and that is the Grace Hopper conference. So if you guys don't know about the Grace Hopper conference, it is a it is the biggest women in tech conference in the world. I've attended for the last six years of my life ever since my first time attending Grace Hopper as a sophomore, no, as a junior in college. In fact, that was also where I got my first internship at JP Morgan Chase because I was able to get connected with an, with an interviewer at the conference. And then eventually a few weeks later, I ended up interviewing for the position for the internship and I got the offer a few weeks after that. I highly, highly recommend going to this conference. Applications, I'm not sure if applications are still open, but I did make a post about it in my community page if you want to look for the application link or if you just look up Grace Hopper application 2023 scholarship, you'll probably find it on Google search. And if not the Grace Hopper conference, there are lots of other conferences out there that also have a career fair, but you also wanna make sure what the target demographic is. Whereas Grace Hopper is for women in tech of all levels, whether you're looking for internships, jobs, experienced hires, etc., compared to other conferences that may be more so for experienced hires. So definitely something to keep in mind. But essentially I went to Grace Hopper my senior year. This was fall of my senior year after my summer internship of my junior year. And at the time I was really just looking at a bunch of different companies. Um, I had about four interviews during that week. So I wasn't really at the career fair very much because I was preparing for my interview that I already had scheduled, which is another thing. A lot of conferences like Grace Hopper, they have on the spot, they have on site interviews and they also do on site offers. You can go in to Grace Hopper, which is about three or four days long, depending on if you're a student or a professional, but it's about three or four days long and you can leave and you can leave that conference on a Friday with an offer in hand for a job. And that is the beauty of Grace Hopper. I really think that it has changed my life for the better. And that is why I still go back to this day, even as a professional, not just for recruiting purposes or applying to jobs, but also for professional development. But essentially on the last day of the conference, the Friday, that was the only real day I was able to walk around the conference and in the career fair and be able to actually talk to people, um, not just the companies I had already scheduled interviews with. And at this point, a lot of companies had already given off their offers and they weren't necessarily hiring for any more. And at the time, I decided to go to one of the booths in the career fair and just to go up and talk to them. I didn't necessarily have a role in mind that I wanted, but the, but the career booth itself just caught my eye. And this would just happen to be the employer that I ended up accepting my offer for. And that is something really to keep in mind. Um, it's really the moments that you don't expect to be important to be the ones that actually make a big change or a big impact on your life. I ended up going up to a recruiter there, um, passing on my resume, talking about my experience, and then they passed me to another person who passed me to then another person. And that person ended up being, I guess, kind of like my hiring manager, the person that I would be working on their team for. And they just happened to be a manager on the cybersecurity team. And the main thing that we talked about was my internship experience at JP Morgan. And even though it was a full stack software engineering internship, it actually really made sense to connect the dots because I was able to talk about what the application actually did. In terms of what the application actually did, that was definitely more so of a cybersecurity focused problem statement. And it turns out that that person I was talking to also started out in a software engineering background and then made their way into cybersecurity. So because we had those parallels in our career, it also made it a whole lot easier to talk to them about my experience, what I've been interested in, how I was pretty open to any role, but I also wanted to stay technical and try different things. But but my resume at the time was very colorful. I had data analyst roles. I had a software engineering internship. I had this cybersecurity uh, certification from my school. I had a bunch of TA and teaching assistant roles. So my resume really was kind of everywhere, but I think that's what they liked about my resume. So I do think that's something important to call out. Sometimes your experience that you don't think makes sense 
can actually make you a more diverse candidate to an employer. And basically after that, you guys kind of know the story by now. I ended up turning down my full-time offer from JP Morgan and accepting the offer for the cybersecurity rotation program at my previous job. I think another reason why I was really interested in it was also because it was a rotation program and that also meant that I was going to be able to try out many different roles and you guys already know me, I am someone who is very interested in just trying out a bunch of different things. And because I was in our cybersecurity rotation program, I was able to be in that program for two and a half years and essentially be on three different teams during that time. So instead of having to wait to trial different teams, to wait two or three years before switching jobs and understanding what that role does or what this role does, I was able to rotate into different teams and that made life a whole lot easier because I was able to experience what it's like in a technical team, a non-technical cybersecurity team, as well as a governance team, which I had no previous insight into. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions on anything that I did, the interview process, the, the hiring process, conferences, Grace Hopper specifically. Um, of course, there are other conferences out there, but this is just the one that I go back to year after year. I hope this video was helpful to you guys, and hopefully it helped a little bit to hear my background story. If you're someone who is interested in going into cybersecurity, if you're pivoting from a different field, or if you're just starting out in college or in a boot camp, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching again, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.